the Man Cave Classroom. I'm John Heeg. This is my partner in crime and education, uh, Kevin Kogan. Um, we're going to look at some documents that I found. This is, this is my new hidden treasure, the diplomatic reception room. Made some friends over the summer, went over there, and, and looking through these resources that they have with paintings, um, a lot of stuff just popped off the page. I even got my, my seventh grader upstairs, I even got his approval on the use of these paintings since he likes landscapes. So, and like, as I said, like, yeah. Educators are always looking for resources. This is going to be like my one-stop shop. Yes. Because I can use this in my eighth grade curriculum as well. You know, uh, people don't want to hear this, but textbooks are dead. Yeah, exactly. They are. You know, and we are looking for real-life sources to use in our classroom. So let me just show you. I mean, there's a lot that popped off the page, but um, I'm going to show you, like, you know, our, our my greatest hits here because we're talking about Westward Expansion. Yep. And I, I know... You open up the chapter with the American progress, with everybody moving westward mm -hmm. and everything. And I think when it comes to using a variety of primary and secondary sources throughout the classroom, we use a lot of paintings, but I mean, especially to you know the, the artists in the classroom who appreciate this kind of stuff, I think it's nice to just go, this is, this is what people are, you know, this is what's going on out west. An artist was inspired enough to go out there, because there was quite a few of them that were going, Let's go out there and let's look at this. So, you know, just from where we're standing here, I mean, what, what are some things that pop off to you in this painting? I mean, the mountains. Oh, my gosh. I, I, even now. Yeah. Even now, I remember my wife and I drove um, from, from Denver, Colorado, down to Santa Fe, New Mexico, driving along the Rocky Mountains. And, like, I'm driving the whole way, like, just staring at the window. Right. <laughs> like, looking at the Rocky Mountains. Right. I mean... Because let's face it, on the East Coast, we really don't have like huge mountains. No, like this. I mean, yeah, the so, Appalachians are they're rolling hills yeah. essentially. You know, we see beautiful waterfalls oh, in the gosh. background, wildlife here. It's incredible. Um, I can almost look at this and smell the air. Yeah, like I know what that smell is going to be like. You know, and again, if we're go if we're going back to the 1800s during the westward expansion after the Louisiana Purchase and so forth right. and so on, you know, what the average American citizen is looking at right. is farmland. Right. You know, the average, I mean, unless you're lucky enough to live in New York City or Philadelphia or Boston, you know, you're looking at a farm day in and day out. And something like this is really going to draw their attention. You're like, I might want to go there. I mean, just that whole, like, idea or that feeling of vacation, you also have to remember this. I mean, if he were to go right here, of course, he would probably go to one of these deer, all right, get a selfie and send it to me. And I'd be able to find out about the West, particularly this location, yeah. pretty quickly. Yes. On the East Coast, you're not finding out a lot about what's out west, what it looks like. We don't have Twitter, we don't have Instagram, right. we don't have the, the, the initial reports yeah. were Daniel Boone's like words back east right. about what he had discovered out west in Kentucky. So I mean, <laughs> and I'm glad you bring up the whole word factor because we, we bring in and we're, we're talking about you know why people move out there, the you know the gold rush, and there's a lot of I guess you could say words, right? But when you throw an image or a painting out there and it makes you smell the air out there and makes you just think. I love to use the word picture and words because there is that old adage. Right. A picture is worth a thousand yeah. words. You know, and there's there's nothing we can say better than this. Showing a young man, young woman, young family who's struggling back east, who doesn't have enough money to buy land or whatever it is, this particular Okay, piece. so let's talk about families then, right? So now, if you're a family, you and I are going to go road trip, right? And, and, and like... I come back from this vacation, I'm like, oh my God, it was, just look, right? Yeah. Now, let's just talk about families, though. I mean, is there opportunity out here with all, I mean, there's a lot of open land here. Open land, wildlife, right? timber. Okay. I mean, there's there's plenty of natural resources here for if you are a poor farmer or a yeah. poor family, and say, all right, let's just pack up what we have, go out there, and we'll make our way. And, and the amount of people that did that in America, yeah. like that truly, to me, is the American dream. Of like, hey, let's just, we have no idea what's going to lie in front of us. Let's just throw everything into a wagon. Let's head out west and let's make our lives. So this was another one that popped off the page. I've never been to Lake Tahoe, but I really, really want to go. And, you know, when I was searching this, this area, this is like, you know, you had all of these gorgeous paintings. This, this popped off the page because of the, the color they use yeah. in the background there. I mean, just incredible. You have a lot of this wide open land. And again, this is, this is how... You know, this is one way people are learning about out west. This is what's going on out here. Really nice. Now, I'm going to start to shift gears here. And, you know, we're talking about opportunity out mm -hmm. there. Um, you know, of course, the first two don't have people in there just yet. 
So hopefully this comes up better. But you know, if we look in this painting, right here. Yeah. If we look in this painting now, now who are we seeing out there? Native Americans. Native Americans. You know, the one thing in my classroom that it's like, it's always the underlying theme of westward expansion. Yeah. It's like. Hey, we moved out west. The Americans moved out west. We seized our opportunity. We grabbed life by the horns and we moved out west. Right. But it's like, yeah, but there were people already living there who had been living there for thousands of years. And generation after generation of those people and their culture had been adapted to their environment. And, you know, whether it's, whether it's the, the Eastern Woodlands, whether it's the Great Plains, whether it's the desert southwest, the desert southwest, the Pacific Northwest, you know, and they learn to live off the land. And now all of a sudden, here comes the white man, right? You know, and, and their world will forever be turned upside down. You're even talking about adapting to the land. I mean, if you look right here, they're next to this this lake here for a reason, yeah. not, not because of the oh, that fresh yeah. air that, that Mr. Cogan was talking about a few moments ago, but. You know they're living off that. There's fish out of that. This, this is these are resources. Here. Water to irrigate their crops. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Now, when we look forward, I mean, the reason I, I think some of the connections I look at when I'm looking at paintings. Now we're talking about getting people out there. Is that when we're looking at those landscapes? Now, as we're starting to see more and more advertisements, whether it be to go out there for free land or reduced price land or you know even to travel. I mean, we're starting to see in the background how. Advertisers are utilizing the landscapes. Um, this is an even better one. I mean, when you talk about um, the mountains over here, um, put that put you put it in there. So you know the same thing. I mean, of course, these colorful images really do. I mean, I, I mean, in terms of like tapping into the senses, as where he's, he's smelling that that fresh air and experiencing it. I mean, this is just one way you're trying to get people to go out there when we're looking at, at and, and unless you were a wealthy American at the time, yeah. you didn't have access to those paintings. You know, you, unless right. you're wealthy in New York or Philly yeah. or Boston or yeah. one of the major cities of the time, right. you didn't have access to that. So this might be your first vi image of the Rocky right. Mountains that you see. You know, and then you tie that in with the railroad, you know, that opportunity, faster transportation, cheaper transportation, their use of itali uh, italics uh, writing here to sure. almost like represent speed you can get out there instead of a six month journey. It's now a six day journey Absolutely. to get out west. Um, so then even looking forward, as we, you know, as we look, we start from like no participants, no people in here, and now we get here, and now we're, we're getting into, okay, now people are gonna go out there. Now there are going to be trains going out there, and we have Native Americans looking out there. And now what we start to shift into is, what's that gonna look like? How is it going to impact it's their land? their life because as you said before they've been living there for hundreds of years they're not just gonna give it up no oh, oh i'm sorry come on in yeah here you, you want a cup of coffee while you're here they're not just gonna give it up and and we're gonna start to see uh you know as we move forward in the curriculum how these these pictures and these paintings or how the landscape is, is completely going to change when we're looking out west but i mean again you know you kind of see land land open land i mean that's just one of the things we still have to see in here. And a lot of that land that was there will eventually, you know, if we go back for a second, yeah. I don't know what the, uh, this one, yeah. you know, a start in the woods and yep. eventually they're gonna come and they're gonna clear that wood, you yep. know, cause, because again, most Americans at the time were farmers. So those 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 woodlands of, of the foothills of the Rockies or, you know, just east of the Mississippi River, what was like Kentucky, Ohio, completely cleared. And what was once woodlands now wide open flatlands. And again, we go into the Native Americans who were living there who had spent generation after generation adapting to that environment, building their home out of the natural resources. Well, now those, those natural resources are gone. Yeah. Now those animals that they once hunted that lived in the forest, the deer, the elk, the antelope, um, are now gone. Yeah. So it's... I'm curious how this, these paintings are going to work in the classroom now that I found them over the summer yeah. um, when we talk about that in American Parks. Well, thank you for watching. Um, we put out a lot of content and uh, other ideas on the Man Cave Classroom on Twitter. We also take some pictures as well. Um, you'll probably see these, pa these paintings on our Instagram you know, with maybe some thoughts to kind of provoke some discussion or learning. Um, we're also on YouTube as well where you can find this video clip on the Man Cave Classroom.